Welcome, great news folks, Tucker Carlson was fired from Fox News. Who will take this prime spot on a questionable throne of a late night TV host on Fox News? Will it be a newly bachelor and unemployed comedy enthusiast Steven Crowder? Or maybe that will be you. But to secure this desired position in a dumpster fire, which is a modern conservative media, we must first ask, what does it take to make a truly popular conservative media host? Welcome aboard, I'm Anna, and in this video we will find out what does it truly take to make a very popular conservative media host. When honest people say what's true, calmly and without embarrassment, and they become weaker, they become powerful. That's a depressing realization, but it won't work. Tucker Carlson, though, is an interesting case. According to 2022 information, he is not just the most watched TV host on Fox News. He is the most watched TV host on cable in general. The most watched figure on cable TV, a man who cannot stop getting paranoid over Eminem that is clearly transgender because she is purple and wears shoes. M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. Until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. This says something about the state of modern affairs on cable TV, but I digress. Tucker Carlson was born into sweet, sweet millions of dollars of a Swanson food company. But you know what? That didn't stop our hero from building a successful career and earning even more sweet millions of dollars on TV. On a conservative scene today, Tucker's fortune is rather an exception than a rule. Of course, many conservative speakers come from a very stable background, be it Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson, but not many inherit millions from their mom. He wants those Swanson quick frozen drumsticks for his very next meal. Crisp and goldy and tender. Like you always fry them, Mom. Remember, kids, it is all about hard work, dedication, and sweat. If you want to make it in conservative media, you got to put in the hard work. I guess you can say that to truly succeed in conservative media career, one must first fail in the other artsy career first. Ben Shapiro, failed screenwriter. His little twin, Brad Cooper, not so successful actress. Steven Crowder, failed comedian. Candice Owens, failed liberal media. Matt Walsh, failed radio host. Dennis Frazier is actually an interesting case because he didn't fail in what he was doing, but rather in his target audience. Dennis Frazier used to advertise religious fundamentalism to Jews, but then he was not really successful, so he switched to advertising religious fundamentalism to the white Christian nationalists in America. Urine and feces. But Tarker Carlson, once again, is an exception out of all conservative media hosts. As it often happens, with the kids of very wealthy parents, Tucker Carlson never actually failed. He just continued to grow in his popularity until the last couple of weeks. And even with his dismissal from Fox, he is still on peak of his career. He is the most popular figure as he ever was. Of course, many career paths are open to Tucker Carlson right now, and I'm fairly sure we will hear from him very soon. While some presenting and media skills may be beneficial to you to make it into yet warm seat of Tucker Carlson, this requirement is not mandatory. The top of conservative media iceberg is shining with overachievers like Ben Shapiro. But this is not always the case. At the bottom of the iceberg, you might find somewhat successful yet not very skilled presenters such as independent dating gurus, hard right streamers, or even just pure grifters which are slapping titles from the websites on top of music and making fairly successful YouTube channels. What often unites conservative media hosts is not specifically their skill set or the way of delivery, but rather an emotional load of their shows. As any human, I am a salad of emotions. On a good day, I'm anxious enough to power a small electric vehicle. On a bad day, I'm anxious enough to power a small town. But not all emotions are the same when we talk about internet and mass media. Love and care may sound cool, but in reality, they are very unsuccessful emotions to drive the viewer count or viewer retention. Research in both Chinese and American social networks showed that the most common emotions that are driving viewer engagement are anger, 
and closely followed by disgust, anxiety, fear, and such. Anger, fear, and anxiety may characterize your average Elden Ring playthrough, but on the fields of social media, across the internet and TV, these are the main emotions that will drive viewer engagement. From Software knew all along what conservative media is only learning right now. Anger and anxiety are addictive and actionable emotions. The same feeling that makes you run dozens of times from the last checkpoint to the next bit of death and misery in Souls games is also driving Tarka Carlson viewers to tune in into his show every single evening. It is a pain mixed with anxiety, but also the pleasure of learning the latest and the most exciting and pinching news about woke, about culture wars, or about trans women. It is easy to dismiss anger and anxiety as simply unwanted emotions, but as Pixar and your therapist might tell you, simply dismissing your anger may not be the best solution. Displacement is a psychological coping mechanism in which a person that cannot express their anger and dissatisfaction over the original agent is instead moving their negative emotion to a less threatening agent. If, by whatever reason, a person cannot direct their anger to a known source, they can always choose to redirect their emotions to something way less threatening. In the world where many conservative supporters experienced over 50 years of downward mobility, anger makes sense. But the problem is that conservatives can't attack in any meaningful way the root cause of their anger. After all, General Motors or Silica Holdings are considered to be persons legally but corporations don't have any faces to punch. Plenty of people today have unresolved issues of anger that they cannot address in any meaningful way. But hey, don't you worry, conservative media is always here. For years now, people like Tarko Carlson and many, many others are actively advocating for hate towards groups which are in minority within the United States, be it communists, Jews, immigrants, Muslims, or lately trans people. And while if you are a conservative viewer who made it that far into the video, then consider a question if a real trans person in your life that you met caused you any harm, or let alone do you even know a single trans person? Or if you are a moderate or liberal viewer, then consider who will be next on the chopping block of conservative media once conservatives get over their trans fetishism. Redirection of attention is easy to script and easy to execute. Every time I am making one of these videos, I am extremely paranoid that the product that I am making is a piece of garbage. I am always paranoid that either my research was lacking, or my conclusions are faulty, or I have a blind spot or extreme bias, or ContraPoints made the same video three or four years ago. But you know what, none of this matters if you are making your work for conservative or right-wing media. When Brad Cooper has to talk about women's rights and gun rights, she knows exactly which comment she has to make. Of course, women's rights should be treated secondary to the gun rights, as gun rights are sacred. None of the other commentary would roll with her audience nor with her sponsors. Conservative media is not driven by the research or reasoning. Instead, it is driven by a common story, by a common narrative. If you have some basic understanding of a writing or writing for the media, you can start writing for a conservative commentary with little to no knowledge on your actual topic or the audience you'll be presenting to. Let's take a recent article from News, which is called A Vegan Leather Made of Dormant Fungi Can Repair Itself. The article is about a single isolated experiment in vegan leather material and potential future uses of this material. But the content or the experiment itself don't really matter for us over here, because all we're gonna do is take a snap of a title and proceed making a commentary. Welcome to the latest science episode, ladies and gentlemen. Did you ever hear of vegan leather? Yeah, I'm repeating, vegan leather. You might think it is made out of vegans, but no, this one is made out of mushrooms, life mushrooms at that. But you know what? Vegan leather is good for environment, and this is all the liberals care about. Apparently, nothing else matters. Buy yourself a normal leather jacket. What's so hard about it? Eat a steak. Be proud of it. We should not let vegans 
What I'm trying to say here is that no matter who are we presenting to or who is presenting or what is the topic, conservative and media creators on the right side already know what to say into the microphone. There is no specific need for research or narrative or story behind conservative media. All that matters is that you select a topic, link it to the pet issue and link that pet issue to a particular group of people who can be used to redirect anger and dissatisfaction of the audience. But they're trying to recruit your kids into climate politics at an earlier age. Make them climate conscious now. Yeah, I didn't think of that. You're right. They're going after the children. Of course they are. But again, what's the point of video games? It's for kids to be kids. Now you sit down, pick up a controller, and they're like, by the way, the world's on fire. Ah!" Structure can be completely absent, and the topic may be as plain as steamed broccoli. But as far as you are able to redirect the same feeling of anxiety and anger, you should be good. Viewers don't watch Tarka Carlson because what he talks about is specifically unique, there is some deep analysis, or he has some specific mode of presentation. Instead, Tucker Carlson is able to deliver on a consistent concoction of fear and anxiety that he is then funneling straight into the eyeballs of his viewers every single evening. Of course, if the main skill of a conservative media commentator is to redirect anger of their audience onto less protected groups, then good question to ask is what exactly are we trying to redirect from? And you know what, I don't really want to concentrate on the epicenter of the modern frustrations in this video because this is a topic of my next video, so if you want to see that, subscribe. But in general, this dissatisfaction and anger can be described in many, many, many graphs. Growing wage gap, decreasing buying power, inability to retire, warming planet, increasing anxiety, rising suicide rates, and much, much more. But instead of looking into multiple beautiful graphs, why won't we take a look at corporations and people that actually drive narrative of conservative media? Conservatives aren't joking when they say go woke, go broke, because indeed it is very hard to secure yourself a sugar daddy if you constantly advocate for slicing sugar daddies. Of course, there is plenty of independent conservative creators and YouTubers who are relying on Helix mattresses or Raycon headphones or maybe even underdeveloped computer and phone games. But the creme de la creme, the top elites of conservative media are relying on hard and hefty cash of millionaires. It's not a secret to anyone that entities like Daily Wire or Turning Point USA or Fraser University are sponsored by billionaires. Hefty list of sponsors for Daily Wire and associates includes people like MLM billionaire Davos or fracking billionaire Brothers Welks or oil and chemical refinery billionaire Charles Koch or hedge fund manager who sponsored hard right movements worldwide Robert Mercer and many many more ghouls so many ghouls that you can feel yourself like you are a main character in the day z or the last of us or plants vs zombies or whichever zombie game out of southerns you prefer chains of right-wing media and organizations consist of interwined network of organizations which are sponsored by other organizations which are then sponsored by non-profits which are then sponsored by other organizations and then sponsored by non-profits and then once you reach the top you end up with a dozen or two dozen of hefty deep pocket billionaires who own these networks. Robert Murdoch owns News Corp that owns Fox News that owned Tucker Carlson till two weeks ago. But News Corp doesn't just own Fox News, it owns over thousands of different entertainment and media companies across the list of more than 60 countries. And of course, Robert Murdoch himself doesn't just own Corp News. He owns far more companies and shares within different companies. For example, he owns about 5%, which is 10 billion worth of Disney. And of course, Robert Murdoch is not alone. There is a hefty handful of similar media magnates across the globe. Wherever you get your mainstream media entertainment from, you're probably getting it from Robert and his buddies. Unless you're watching this channel, which is not sponsored by anybody. But hey, Robert, if you listen, I would really much like to pay off my loans. Many media organizations under umbrella of conservative media may be sponsored by non-profits, for-profit organizations, or single businessmen. 
And with the rise of Daily Wire, many, many millionaires as well as conservative organizations realize that they can be using TV and as well as internet to push their own agenda. More and more in mainstream social media as well as on YouTube, you can find channels which are produced and paid for by conservative organizations. Reclaim the Media is sponsored by Reclaim Party. Reclaim Party is sponsored by British millionaire Jeremy Hoskin. Jeremy is notorious for sponsoring multiple conservative organizations. A Leadership Institute channel has been posting rather unsuccessfully on YouTube for many years. It is sponsored by the Leadership Institute, which is not really an institute. It is more like a self-improvement organization. In return, Leadership Institute is sponsored by Kirby, Yulheim and Brad families, which are pushing for truly American values of union busting, religious fundamentalism and privatization. For the sake of it, Facebook media group Alberta Proud in my local community is sponsored by Alberta Proud Party. We're only about months away from the next election, so far-right Alberta Proud Party just spring out, out of nowhere. It is traced around 20 to 30 businesses across Alberta all of which can be traced to two local millionaires, one of which owns car rentals and the other one owns liquor stores. Just as the billionaire Murdoch himself, petty millionaires across the countries can sponsor their own agenda across social media as well as TV channels. Of course, redirecting anger is not in any way a new idea. But the internet algorithms are a tool that Joseph Goebbels himself could only dream of. Today, at a very small price, anybody interested in pushing their own interests can sponsor small independent creators as well as push their own narrative through big corporations and channels. And the thing is, there is no need for hard writing, costly tasks or any unique idea. Yes. Quite the opposite way, conservative media is usually working on the main principles of propaganda. Very simple narrative, anger, fear-mongering, and constant repetition of the same ideas and topics. In the end, there isn't that many requirements for one to become a conservative media superstar. While, of course, having some money and having some skill in media might be beneficial, those are not specifically the main requirements. Instead, the main point in becoming a conservative media superstar is one will to sell their art and to sell their own soul for billionaire money. Whoa, Anna, this video looked like it took a lot of work. It maybe deserves a like and even a comment. I did enjoy making this video and I guess I'm entering my video essay phase. So if you'd like to stick for that, subscribe. And after that, see you on the next book.